are the little saw wet owl. These are two small mice. That's what he gets for dinner. And in this container here, there's four for a red-tailed hawk and two for a barn owl. And that's their diet for the day? That is it. Okay. Yes. And they I pretty all... much know what they what they look, know what they're uh, how much they'll eat. And all of those birds swallow them whole, unlike the kestrel. Um she the red tail sometimes she picks them apart. She doesn't necessarily swallow them whole, but she doesn't snack all day. Like, like the kestrel. kestrel. And I, I want to point out, you know, we're looking at these right now. Um, Nancy gets her mice frozen from fuzzyacres.com. Mm -hmm. They're a family-owned business. Uh, they're in the business of raising mice or to sell to people like Nancy who rescue, rehab um, wild birds that are raptors and need to eat this. So they come in different sizes and shapes and hairless and with hair and without. So one of the things Nancy um, asks for, and we're going to do a little plug for her, is if you want to help her out, um, go to fuzzyacres.com and get a gift certificate uh, right on their Facebook. I went and I found their little post for gift certificates and I will give you information at the end to uh, that website as well as how to get it to Nancy so that she can buy the multiple the mice that are needed to feed all of her. With, um, with not just uh, birds of prey, but other animals too. Because when, if I was stepping right into the cage, that, an, when I say animal, it could be a mammal, uh, could be a porcupine or a possum or a bird like this, uh, could see, you know, that's freedom, I'm going to, I'm going to leave, would escape. So having this double entry means I can go in, I can shut this door behind me, and then go into the main part of the cage. And this is Oz, the barn, B-A-R-N, owl. And you will see, you know, he's very distinctive looking. This is the owl that people think about. I'm trying to think of, never mind. <laughs> and he's another educational bird for you? He is. So he's not releasable? He's not releasable, although he can fly, but he, he um, was raised in a zoo. So he has been in captivity all his life. And so how did he come to you from a zoo? Well, he was in a zoo out in Kansas, and he went to a rehabilitator who was up in the Adirondacks and then um, he came to me from there. So the zoo just couldn't keep him any longer? I'm not sure okay. of the reason mm -hmm. for that but that was his uh, yeah, that's his travels so he's you know he's used to people but he's got a real personality and he's over 20 years old. And how long might he be expected to live? Well, <laughs> it's hard to know. I mean, he seems to be doing just fine. And of course, I have all my birds have a checkup and um, weigh them and make sure they're healthy. And he seems to be doing well. But he has um, decided that he's protecting his, he has a, uh, nest this big nesting box that he likes to hang out in and he feels like he wants to protect that and so sometimes he will make these sounds that are kind of like a very eerie sound it's kind of a high-pitched shrill hissing sound so at he, you when you go in or yeah, just well, random um if he hears me coming he'll do that so was that a noise that we were hearing when we were, we were over with the hawk? It. Yes. Okay. We were hearing it when we were over there. It wasn't super loud. No. Now I also noticed his enclosure has a lot of 
uh, vertical boards. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a reason for that? Because the other, the others don't have that visibility dec decrease so much. Right. Um, ideally, this one would be con constructed the same way. I mean, this is really the best for large rafters because it's, it's protective of them. Um, you know, they have some. Um, they're, they don't have to be concerned about what's outside, um, but so they, they can, you know, they're still getting air and light. You can see they get a lot of light through the roof there. Yeah, the clear top, and right. they can see through the slats, but they can see not so slats. much that they feel they have to be watching all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of... So they're more protected. So we may hear that shrill. <laughs> you may or you may. I'm going to, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'll go inside doing a lot of education. So once he gets his jesses on, well, he also likes to take them off. <laughs> yeah. uh, but he's, he's very good once he's, uh, once he's on display. But he has that very distinctive heart-shaped face that barn owls have. And you can see it's white. And you can see that, we call that facial disc, that ring of feathers around his face. And his ear openings are located behind that. And he can hear exceptionally well. That's why he heard us coming. He heard us coming. So is there a, a, a purpose for the round feathers in the, or do they funnel sound to him? Are you saying around his face? Correct, yes. Yes, and that's a really good point. It acts like my satellite dish <laughs> and it, it, the sound comes, comes in and then he can pinpoint exactly where it's coming from. So in the middle, it looks like a nose. The what? In the middle of his face looks like a nose. Um, well, it's, yeah, it's feathered. He has a lot of feathers over his nostrils and down towards his beak. His beak is like right under that point, that feathery point oh, there. Because we don't have so many farms anymore. And farmers who have big barns really like to have barn owls because they eat a lot of mice. They keep the rodent population under control. They're very efficient, very efficient hunters. Right, Lax? Now, I'm, I'm looking through his cage. Do his legs bend backwards? The way his legs bend? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how uh, raptors' legs bend. It's just you can see it more distinctly with him and with some of the other birds. Well, I guess that would make sense. They fly and they have to bring their feet up to grab. Mm -hmm. Right, because when they're grabbing, you've probably seen in various videos, when they're coming in to get prey, they're using their talons. Their, and that's, that's also their defense. So they've got to be able to put them up like this. So you've been a good boy, Oz. It's only when he's inside here that he makes that particular strange sound. But he's fine when he's outside. And he will eat how many mice a day? He eats two, two large mice. Good boy. You are being a good boy today. But you can see the colors. It's beautiful, beautiful shade. Being a very good boy. Oh, he's so quiet when he. Is, is, you know, his coloring is different than any other owl that that's in this part of the country. And is that that's a typical color? Then that's what a barn that owl is. will look that's like. That's what a barn owl looks like. He really is beautiful. Yes, yes you are. You're being very good. 
I'm being very good today, and he has beautiful brown eyes. I know it's hard to see the color of his eyes. There. Yeah, you know you have an audience. I can so see you're the behaving. feathers now above his beak. You can see the are there feathers. It's just kind of looks like somebody who let all uh, their uh, mustache <laughs> go untrimmed. And he can fly? Or he well, he, he could fly. I, I wouldn't want to test him outside and have him get away. Get I wasn't sure if, if he had an injury that... Oh, yeah. oh. No, so he, he doesn't, doesn't have an injury. Okay. He just has been in captivity too long. So he wouldn't know how to live out there. He doesn't know. He doesn't know the dangerousness. So Jack is, is tapping his beak. No, that's not his feet. That he's making that sound um, with his inside with his tongue. That oh, clapping. So that's not his feet clapping. No, that's not his feet. It's his tongue. All barred owls do that. That's kind of like okay. This is my space. Just letting you know. Just letting you know you're in my space. And these guys are very, um, very calm, and they get along. They're two two males. They have really laid back personalities. Barred owls do. And, and this is, is our most common owl in the Adirondacks. So this is barred. B a r r e d versus the barn. This versus the before. barn. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, you can see, of course, the difference in how they look. Look totally, a totally different look. And what's the story on these two? Well, Justin, about 10 years ago, in the winter time, and this often happens in the winter, when barred owls are looking to hunt, and they're on the margins of the road, and they fly horizontally, so they're not paying attention. And he flew into a car and injured his right wing. And it didn't heal well enough for him to be released. So then he became one of my educational birds. And Jack, a similar story, except he had a head injury. He, car, the collision, um, injured his uh, his brain a little. I I don't like to talk about him, but <laughs> he although he can fly, he has trouble navigating, and he doesn't he isn't able to um, uh, to fly in a straight line, and so he wouldn't be able to uh, hunt for himself. So I see he's looking up. I think he's trying to figure out where the sound is coming from, where our, he's trying to locate all the sounds. And I'm looking, it's Jared up top, right? The what? Jared is up top? No, that, Justin. Justin, sorry. It's Justin, that's um, there. His eyelids go down and over, not up and down, I'm noticing when he blinks. Well... Do they Owls have like than one island? like other like some other uh, mammals have an inner membrane that is transparent that they can shut, which is called a nictitating membrane, and that allows them to fly through the woods and not injure their eyes with twigs and branches and things like that. Nictitating, that's a great word. Yeah. For Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> but they can see through it. They can see through it. And then he has another eyelid. Well, he has an eyelid like we do. Goes up and down. And he, of course, under, and then he has this membrane in between that and the cornea, like, like uh, we have. I mean, their, the structure of their eye is like ours. That's I mean, she's the one on. My card, my business card, I think that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, 
I'll see if she'll sit on the room for you. Okay, Miss Kathy. My over here, Miss Nicola. She's non-releasable. She's she uh, is the she's the kestrel, the smallest falcon we have in this area. And these falcons are the birds you see over in Washington County in the field. They're birds of the fields. Come on, come over and say hello. <laughs> Take it out. But you can see she has that falcon-like silhouette, you know, the narrow head and beak and the, can you want to step up? And she, I could tell you her, I happen to know her story. Um, she is six years old. She was found, I have to take this mask up, it's so annoying. <laughs> I'm trying to talk. Um, she was injured up in Whitehall and found on a golf course and her right wing had, had a injury in the bone. And the person who found her decided he was going to keep her, did not seek out a rehabilitator right away. And I don't know the reason that he was, what he thought he was going to do with her. But he kept her for about three weeks and before he decided that he should contact a rehabilitator, he fed her a combination of hamburger and dog food and I don't know what else, which is not the right diet for a raptor. And fortunately, I got her in time to give her the right diet, uh, but she was left with a bone that healed out of alignment. Bo Birds' bones heal very fast, and if they're not properly aligned, particularly in a young bird, they're going to heal um, in a way that is going to make it um, difficult for them to fly. And because she's a kestrel, her way of hunting is to fly up like over a field, hover, and dive and she can't hover. Mm -hmm. She can fly short distances, uh, enough to get into trouble, <laughs> but she can't hover, and so she can't <clears throat> hunt for herself. But she's a wonderful educational bird. She loves people, she loves attention, she likes to look at everything. She's fascinated by the possums. <laughs> So she, she's worked out as a good educational bird. Now, if she were a male, she would have blue on her wings. That's how you could tell the difference. It's, it's sort of like a game where I put things back in place, and then he takes them all apart. Can you do some? <laughs> OK, and who, who are we with so that the people watching? He is a raven. Poe is a raven which is in the corvid family. These, these are very smart birds. The raven, the crow, the blue jay. Let's see, who else do we have? Magpies. And they are all very smart. They know how to figure things out. They know how to problem solve. They can, if I hide, uh, let's say hide as me, mouse with one of these toys and I disguise it and put all sorts of and things around it. He always finds it. He always figures figures it out. It's and like, so he knows what toys he has in here. He knows what toys he has in here and he knows. And regardless of where I hide them or put them <laughs> 
uh, the food that is, he always finds it. And he needs that stimulation. He does. And that's a really good point because uh, these kind of birds in captivity really need a lot of enrichment. They need a lot of interesting things to do. That's why he's got all this uh, paraphernalia in here. And he's been taking pieces of the wood of the cage apart. Um, Is think, that why you have the metal around the bottom? No, no, that was for a different purpose, but it's a good thing I have it there because that keeps, <laughs> that keeps part of it intact. But he's taken all the bark off that tree. Now his story, and, and this um, is really very tragic, he came from Hamilton County. He was shot with a pellet gun. Uh, it was exactly a year ago. Um, I don't know why the person shot him. I have no idea. Uh, it's not legal to do that, but that happens. And the pellet became embedded in his, uh, in, uh, want deeply within the joint of one of his wings. Uh, I, of course, took him to the vet and tried to, uh, the vet tried to remove it, you know, do surgery, and it was too seriously embedded. It would have damaged his whole wing. So you can see his left wing droops there. So he cannot fly, but he can hop and he can glide. So the pellet that he was shot he with, around um, was there lead in the pellet? Do you know? Arrow. I don't He's know. a red-tailed hawk and he was injured about, I'm not exactly sure because it came from another rehabilitator, but I'm going to say about probably five years ago. And he is missing part of his right wing. So, of course, he can't fly. Um, he, can't, he can't hunt for himself. And I noticed the leather bands on his legs. Yes, those are the anklets. And you can see there's a grommet. Those of you who do sewing and are used to grommets, <laughs> he's got grommets holding the bands on his legs. And then a thin leather piece of leather called a jess. We'll go through that. So that when you're you when you have him out mm -hmm. educating you attach that to the right. And I'm I think you said before you leave those on him because it's more work <laughs> getting those on and off of a larger bird. That's right. Versus the saw wet, right. which you can put on and off more easily. And he's got his two mice, which, oh, no, he's, he's got, got four. four. And you put two up next to him and two on the ground, or on the stump. Yeah, just to make things a little more interesting. Oh, and he's watching us. He's, okay. What he lacks in size, he makes up in personality. He's, he uh, came to me from another rehabilitator. He was, I don't know his whole story because he came from um, the Ithaca area. That's where he was injured and he's missing part of a wing. Oh. And his name is Sam. Sam the Sawwet. Do you want me to spell that for you? Yes. Okay, Sawwet is a hyphenated word. S-A-W-W-H-E-T. And the reason that someone named him that is because they thought that his call sounded like a saw being sharpened. Wetting is another word for sharpening. But I don't think it sounds like that. I think it sounds like a UPS truck backing up. It's like a beep, beep, beep. <laughs> And how old is Sam? He's, I don't know his exact age. He is an adult. He's probably three or four years old. 
And where would he normally he would li live? He would live in woods like this, the you know, boreal forest. There are a lot of these guys around only you, you never see them because they keep a low profile. Uh, but they do migrate. And so where would he go if he was able to live in the wild? Um, he would, I would probably release him right here if I, if he could be released. And then he would so find a, a cavity in one of the trees. He's a cavity nester. And would he stick around here all year or he migrates um, to he where? He migrate a little further south. But he's not going to go to Florida. <laughs> he's not going to go that far. He's, he's looking right at you, isn't he? It's hard for you to see, but he has beautiful have yellow eyes. You can only see his pupils right now. Mm -hmm. So he is one of my educational birds. I, I've only had him about six months. Oh, so he's relatively new he to your... He is new. And when you when you take him out to um, educational sites, mm -hmm. do you go to schools? Um, do you do you have him on your hand? Well, with all of my educational birds, they're tethered to me in some way. Mm -hmm. um, they have he doesn't have them on now, but he'll have on these leather little, little leather. Uh, they're sorry, long. I, and I can show you afterwards. Um, it's a, a, a very skinny, it's called a, a jess. And it goes around his ankles. And then, and I hold on to that. So he, he stays with me and he's not going to wander off. And does he escape. like going to do educational things like your kestrel does? Um, owls have a different personality. Mm. They'd rather be left alone. <laughs> they're, they're, you know, they tolerate. And um, one of my questions was, how much does his head turn? Will it turn all the way around? Uh, can you see behind him? Not all the way, but it will turn almost all the way, like three, like three quarters of the way. So now I ask you, how many degrees is that? Uh, 270. 270, right. You She's a math mouse. teacher. I'm a math teacher. So that's a great, <laughs> that's a great educational question to tie in the different disciplines um, into that's right. your education. And right. that's, a, that's a great question for math. It's good for, you know, kids to try to, depending on their age, to figure out, figure that out. And the reason that, uh, well, kestrels can do it too, and also hawks, but they don't need to because their eyes are on the side of their heads. Whereas an owl, everything is on the front of their face like ours. So in order to see what's over there, they've Perfect. got to turn. Okay, turn so we head. are going to wrap up with Nancy Kimball. Uh, she is part of North Country of Wild, Wild Care. Care. Uh, that is an, an Adirondacks rescue rehab group. Um, and we want to make sure we mention that if you find a distressed, hurt animal in the wild, in your backyard, wherever, you happen to hit it with your car, um, don't try to save it yourself. Uh, please reach out to a, a rescue group in your area if you aren't local. Um, because, of course, we're including this on our NatureFest2020.org site. Um, and I'm going to take this down for a minute because we're social distancing and that's why our Nature Fest <laughs> went virtual this year. But we're outdoors and we have a little bit of space. Um, so Nancy Kimball is part of that group. She rescues, um, you'll see our possum and we did her raptors today. Uh, she does rescue, rehab, and education. And she has licenses, um, both state and federal for those. Uh, so. There are really well-trained and licensed people to rescue and rehab animals, so please avail yourself of that. Um, she has been really generous in allowing us uh, here on her property to learn about what she does, to visit and, and meet her uh, birds and uh, rescued animals, uh, the possums today. And 
three or four weeks ago. So we want to say thank you to Nancy Kimball um, for all that you do. Uh, you give a lot of your own time and, and your life to these animals to rescue and rehab and education. Um, and, and it's very much in line with the, what the friends uh, stand for and do. So we appreciate all that you've done in letting us here as well. Um, and we want to make sure that if you want to make donations to North Country Wild Care, uh, we have information at the end of our video. Um, and put Nancy Kimball's name in your donation and half of that will come to her. It's expensive to build these buildings, clean their cages, feed these animals. So if you go to uh, fuzzyacres.com, uh, a, a family owned business, that's where she has chosen to get her frozen mice to feed her birds. So um, you can go there as well. I did, got a gift certificate for her um, to help do this work. And in closing, I just want to say thank you. And if you had anything else that you wanted to, to share with everybody watching. Well, I just wanted to mention that North Country Wild Care is always in need of volunteers for the, the various functions. Um, they need people to staff the hotline, which is done 24-7 to link up the finders of orphaned and injured animals with the, uh, with the appropriate wildlife rehabilitator. There are people who just do transport. You don't have to be a licensed wildlife rehabilitator to uh, do hotline, to do transport, to help raise funds, uh, because this is a very labor-intensive kind of pursuit. And, and I have to say that I never thought of this before our recent year of the pandemic, but it, doing this is something I can do. It gives me a purpose. I know that I have to get up every morning and feed six baby possums and get food ready for my animals for the rest of the day. So in a way, I'm, I'm thankful that I have this job. Thank you for visiting us. We have a lot of other material on our website as well. Please check it all out and uh, like us on Facebook and share. Thanks, everybody.